Tomorrow is National Cheese Day. We have a cheese day. So in honor of that, Dr. Ashton and I are going to be putting together our very own cheese and charcuterie boards here. But we can't do this on our own. We need some help. We are going to turn to the author of That Cheese Plate Will Change Your Life. Marissa Mullen, really? Cheese plate's going to change my life? How's it going to change my life? Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to make a cheese plate today with you guys. Um, cheese plates, in my opinion, I feel like are a form of self-care. So we're going to get into a cheese plate meditative mood and make that summer in the city plate. So, Marissa, these cheese boards now are all the rage, and there's a lot of competition between designing them in really fancy ways. I'm technically challenged in the kitchen, but you're going to take us through it, right? So TJ and I have some stuff here. How do we get started? Yes, yeah, so I created the cheese by numbers method, which is the step-by-step -step method to creating a beautiful cheese board. Very simple. So we're going to follow these six steps. So step one is cheese. So on my board here, I have some mozzarella balls up top, and then we have some cheddar on the bottom. I pre-sliced this. And you wanna just set your foundation with two different types of cheese, one hard cheese, one soft cheese is usually my go-to. Okay. So in my book, That Summer in the City Plate, we'll flip the page, and this is our cheese by numbers map and our step-by-step -step guide. So step two, we have our meat. So I like to work with the largest items down to the smallest. So I have this prosciutto-wrapped cantaloupe here, and we're just going to stack this right next to our little jar here. And this is such a great summer snack. I love the refreshing taste of prosciutto and cantaloupe. Always a fave. And then next we're going to do something that I call the salami river. So this is my signature meat styling tip that flows down the center of the cheese plate. So here we have some folded meat. We have uh, general salami. I'm just going to add this to the plate and we want to span it from one end to the other. It makes a really nice focal point and it also gives our guests a nice easy way to eat the salami because i think a lot of the times when you get salami in a package it's a little bit stuck together so this way we're fanning it out and we're making a nice focal point on our cheese plate okay marissa you lost me on the good. river I'm, I'm struggling with the river here for a second what's the river method what is that it's a river of salami a tj does it matter because i have it folded i have a piece that's folded twice should it be folded just one time like in half or Fold it a second time. Yes, yeah, so what we're gonna do, what we wanna do is fold it directly in half. Okay. And then in half again. And then, ah, okay, to I make got you. A little... Thank you, Dr. So Ash. Fold it into <laughs> this is okay. the blind leading the blind here. <laughs> All right, what's next, Marissa? Awesome. Now we have produce. So with our salami river, we're gonna make produce ponds. So basically that's just adding little piles of produce around the plate. And this is when I like to kind of tie into the artistic element of a cheese plate and say we're painting with our produce. So this is where we're adding in some beautiful color on our board. I have some peaches up top. I'm going to do some peaches on the other side. I like to work with symmetry a lot too. So it's like if I do some vegetables on one side, do some fruit vegetables on the other. I'm also going to take some green grapes and wrap them around the mozzarella here. And we're adding this color, but also pairing. So I love pairing like a dried, apricot with a sharp cheddar that works really well together um, you want to consider you know color flavor texture all of that with your cheese board creations what, what so am again, i doing what about the crackers i got crackers here still are we using those oh yeah so crackers come in uh next step which is crunch got some oh, raspberry crunch. stuck in my ring right wow and we're going to make something that i call a cracker stack so you basically stack your crackers like so and lean them on your cheese plate so this is a way to get people started with crackers on the plate, but you also don't want to fill up too much, um, too many crackers because you want to save some room for all the rest of your items. So I always like to do a cracker plate on the side of the cheese plate. Ah. And then keep oh. filling in your gaps until all of the empty spaces are full. So I'm sprinkling in some nuts here. Uh, if you're allergic to nuts, you can always use corn nuts or crispy chickpeas. Those are a great addition. And look how fast it comes together. It's you know so what? beautiful. Mar Marissa, I made a tea out of strawberries just for TJ. Oh, beautiful. Love that. Yeah, see, it's like you can do any sort of creation you want. <laughs> You are absolutely right. There is an art to this, and this is incredibly helpful, and it looks fantastic. It's not a competition, Dr. Ashton, okay? But, Marissa, it is good to see you and have you, as always. We hope to see you back, the lady who has made a career out of cheese. I love it. Uh, thank you for being with us today. And, folks, you can pick up a copy of that cheese plate. will change your life. It is in stores now. Well, hey,
there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.